Welcome to my video on the differences between Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. So first we will see what is the difference in the location, the way it involves, the way both the diseases involve the intestines. So the Crohn's disease as we have uh, already seen, it involves any part of the intestine from the mouth to the anus. So it can involve the small intestine and even it can involve the large intestine also. Whereas ulcerative colitis, it involves only the colon. Small intestine in other parts, uh, it doesn't involve the other parts, it involves only the colon. And the distribution of the lesions is, specifically we have a skip lesions. Like we have a part of the intestine which is involved and in between we have the intestine which is healthy. So we have the skip lesions with alternating healthy intestinal segment. Whereas when we come to the ulcerative colitis, we don't find such a skip lesions, but we have a continuous involvement of the bowel. So this is a diff this is one difference. And while studying the differences, actually we will uh, go from outside the intestine to the mucosal surface. So when we see the thickness of the wall in the Crohn's disease, what happens is there is hyperplasia of the muscularis. So the wall is thickened, whereas in the ulcerative colitis, the wall is thinned out. And the lumen is narrowed because you have the increased thickness of the bubble wall in the Crohn's disease. So as the thickness increases, the lumen gets reduced. So we have a narrowed lumen, whereas when we see in the ulcerative colitis, we have a lumen which is dilated. Then the creeping fat, the fat which is uh, which appears as if it is wrapping around uh, the intestine that is present in the Crohn's disease whereas it is absent in the cases of the ulcerative colitis. So this is on the surface when we are seeing the intestine. Then uh, coming to the ulcers, the type of the ulcers what we see is we have a fissuring ulcers which are involving the mucosa, submucosa and even the muscularis. Whereas in the ulcerative colitis, we have a broad based ulcers which are involving only the mucosa and submucosa. So here we don't have the involvement of the muscularis. Okay, so in Crohn's we have fissuring ulcers, whereas in ulcerative colitis, we have a broad based superficial ulcers. Then the mucosal surface appearances. The pseudopolyps we see in the ulcerative colitis, which we don't see in the Crohn's disease. Pseudopolyps means the, polyp, the polypoidal projections, which are nothing but a regenerating epithelium, which is appearing like a polyp. So these pseudopolyps we don't find in the Crohn's disease. Whereas in the Crohn's disease, we have a cobblestone appearance in between and the ulcers or the scars, we have the cobblestone appearance. That is mainly because of the healthy edematous mucosa which is present in between the ulcers or the scars. So that cobblestone appearance we don't see in the ulcerative colitis. This is the mucosal surface. So we have finished on the external surface from the creeping fat, thickness uh, and thickness of the wall and the lumen. Then on the mucosal surface, now what we have seen is a mucosal surface. We see the pseudopolyps and the cobblestone appearance. When we see the microscopic differences between the Crohn's and the ulcerative colitis, here you can make out that we have a deep fissuring ulcers in the Crohn's disease which are extending into the muscularis also. Whereas when we see the ulcerative colitis, we have a broad based ulcers which are confined to the mucosa and the submucosa. They are not extending into the muscularis. Then coming to the inflammatory reaction, we see the inflammation which is transmural like the inflammatory infiltrate, it extends from the mucosa, submucosa and into the muscularis even. Whereas when we see the inflammatory infiltrate in ulcerative colitis, it is confined to the mucosa and the submucosa but there is no infiltration into the muscularis. So it is limited to mucosa and submucosa. And the lymphoid reaction we see the lymphoid aggregates which are more common in the Crohn's disease and these lymphoid aggregates, they are, we can see them in the mucosa, submucosa and also in the muscularis. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, we see lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate which is 
which is mild and we don't see such a lymphoid aggregates like what we see in the Crohn's disease and uh, the lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate also it is confined only to mucosa and submucosa we don't see the lymphoid aggregates in the muscularis then the granulomas these are the diagnostic features of the Crohn's disease so we see the granulomas in the mucosa submucosa and muscularis whereas here we don't see uh, any granulomas in the ulcerative colitis then the goblet cell depletion we typically see in the ulcerative colitis in the uh, mucosal lining cells but we don't see any goblet cell depletion in the Crohn's disease and another important feature is cryptitis and the crypt abscesses now these are the diagnostic features of the ulcerative colitis we can see even in the Crohn's disease in the initial stages but in the later stages we don't find any cryptitis or the crypt abscesses Usually when the patient comes to us, he will not be in the initial stage. So when we take a biopsy, we don't find any cryptitis and crypt abscesses. So they are very rare in the Crohn's, whereas cryptitis, crypt abscesses are often seen in the ulcerative colitis. Now when we see the complications, uh, we find the fissures and the fistulas, uh, they are more common in the Crohn's disease. If you remember, uh, I told you that we have a deep fissuring ulcers which are extending into the muscularis and even these fissuring ulcers they may deepen more to the serosa and open up on the surface of the intestine. Sometimes these, uh, ulcer, these fissuring ulcers which have opened up they can form a fistulous tract with the adjacent bowel. So we have fissures and fistulas which are common in the Crohn's but we don't find in the ulcerative colitis because in the ulcerative colitis we have only the superficial ulcers. We don't have the deeper uh, ulcers which are involving the muscularis. So never we find any fissures and fistulas in the ulcerative colitis. Now stricture formation this is more common in the Crohn's disease because uh, we have the deep fissuring ulcers which heal by the fibrosis. So when the fibrosis occurs there will be a contracture. So that contracture will produce a stricture formation whereas we don't have such a deep fissuring ulcers which has to heal. So we don't see such a stricture formation in the ulcerative colitis. So fibrosis because of the healing process that's present in the Crohn's disease but we don't see in the ulcerative colitis. And the risk of developing the malignancies that is more in the ulcerative colitis. We see more of the dysplastic changes in the lining epithelium. All that is more in ulcerative colitis. So there is increased risk of malignancy also more in ulcerative colitis. In the Crohn's disease, we have the risk but it is lower when compared to ulcerative colitis. And the type of the malignancy which develops in the Crohn's is most commonly it is the lymphoma more common than carcinoma. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, it is the adenocarcinoma which is more common than the lymphomas. So that was what are the complications then what are the differences in the immunological features if you remember the pathogenesis so we have the activation of CD4 plus T cells by the uh, dendritic cells so these CD4 plus T cells they differentiate into TH1, TH2 and TH17 cells so in the Crohn's disease mainly we have the differentiation into TH1 cells whereas ulcerative colitis ulcerative colitis develops when these cells they differentiate into TH2 cells okay so we have TH2 in ulcerative and TH1 in the Crohn's disease and these TH1 cells the, they produce interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor and IL-12 so these interferon gamma and tumor necrosis factor they are responsible for the granuloma formations so these are the cytokines which are produced by TH1 whereas the cytokines which are produced in the ulcerative colitis are TGF beta, interleukin 4, 5 and interleukin 13. So this interleukin 13 is mainly responsible for the damage of the epithelial cells leading to the ulceration. So these are the cytokines what we see in the ulcerative colitis. Now we have certain antibodies also, specific antibodies. So we have perinuclear antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibody which is most commonly seen in the ulcerative colitis. And uh, we have anti-saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody. This is specifically seen in the Crohn's disease. We don't see in the ulcerative colitis. So these are the differences between the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. It will be easy for us to remember when we try to describe from the external surface to the internal surface and then we go to the microscopy 
and then we come to the immunological features. Coming to the lab investigations, what has to be done in the case of the inflammatory bowel disease, the first is the blood test, routine blood test. When we do the complete blood picture or the complete blood count, the patient will have the anemia. This is because of uh, the chronic bleeding ulcers what are present. He may develop the anemia and there will be an increase in the WBC count. And when we do the antibody tests, these are specific for the inflammatory bowel disease. We see anti-saccharomyces cerevisia antibodies which are positive in the Crohn's disease. They are never positive in ulcerative colitis. They are positive only in the Crohn's disease. And another antibody is perinuclear antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. These are positive most commonly in the ulcerative colitis. Now we can see few cases of the Crohn's disease also which are positive but mostly they are positive in the ulcerative colitis. Other antibodies are also there which are positive in the Crohn's disease like anti-flagellin antibody and anti-outer membrane protein antibody. These two antibodies they are positive only in the Crohn's disease. So in the Crohn's disease we have three antibodies anti-saccharomyces cerevisia antibodies, anti-flagellin antibody and anti ultra membrane protein antibodies. These three antibodies are positive in the Crohn's disease. Then coming to the C reactive protein, it will be elevated in the inflammatory bowel disease. And when we see the electrolyte panels, actually we find the low potassium levels in the Crohn's disease. This is mainly because in the Crohn's disease, the patient can have the diarrhea. So he may develop the uh, low potassium levels. Then ESR is raised due to the inflammation and as the mucosal cells are damaged in this inflammatory bowel disease, we have deficiency of iron and the B12. This is due to the malabsorption. Then when we go to the imaging studies, when we take a barium meal x-ray, we find a string sign. If you remember, this is the string sign. This is mainly because of increased thickness of the wall which leads to narrowing of the lumen. So when we take a barium meal x-ray, the small intestine, it appears like a string. This is common in the Crohn's disease. And also this barium meal x-ray is useful to find out the abnormal fistulas between the organs in the Crohn's disease. Then we have colonoscopy or the sigmoidoscopy can be done where we can see the mucosal surface. So in the Crohn's disease, we have a cobblestone appearance with railroad rack like healing scars and the ulcers we can find. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, we can find the broad based ulcers with the pseudopolyps. And CT scanning and the MRA, actually they are more helpful in finding out the abscesses or the fistulas. So these are the investigations what we have to do. So the in important is the blood investigations. Then we have the imaging studies. So that finishes about the differences between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease along with the investigations what has to be done in the inflammatory bowel disease. Thank you friends for listening patiently.